rule the imaging world, so have the transformers in language processing. More recently, transformers have shown promise on images too. This paper CodeNet combines the strength of both transformers and CNNs in a single network. The strength of CNNs is the ability to generalize far better than transformers. On the other hand, transformers have huge model capacity. So can we combine self-attention mechanism with CNNs to make the best of both worlds? This paper tries to do just that and stacks CNNs and transformer blocks systematically to arrive at an architecture called CodeNet. So, Let's dive deeper into how to do it. CNNs have an incredible property, which is translation equivariance. By equivariance, what we mean is that a shift in the input results in an equivalent shift in the output, or more precisely, the output features. This is extremely useful to generalize to unseen cases quite well. Using this property, we can train CNNs with relatively less images because we can leverage the power of augmentation. What I mean is, the CNNs see these two images differently because the person is shifted to the right in one of the images compared to the other. This very property also helps improve the generalization ability of CNNs and we can also use augmentation techniques to train using relatively less images. But CNNs don't have that much of a model capacity compared to transformers. With the kind of data explosion we are going through, we should be able to learn from billions of images. So this is where transformers come in handy. Transformers were originally developed for sequential data, which are like textual inputs. So they have large model capacity. Also, the main building block of transformers is the attention module. And the beauty of attention is that it captures global information in the input. In other words, transformers act as global receptive field. This very good property also acts against us when applied to images, which are two dimensional data rather than sequential data. Because of the global receptive field, a rotation or a translation augmentation such as this is not too different from the original image and so transformers tend to overfit the data very easily. This is the main reason we have to train transformers with millions and millions of images. Or in other words, transformers are data hungry and can easily overfit the data set. So if we can bring together the advantages of CNNs and transformers then theoretically, we should have a much more efficient network. A simple and naive solution, obviously, is to combine the conf and transformer blocks into a single block, and we can stack the convolution and transformer blocks together. But the biggest bottleneck to this approach is the computational complexity. So as a solution, we can either downsample the images to a lower dimension. In this case, if we take an input image of size 224 by 224, we can reduce it to say 112 by 112 and then work with the lower dimension at later stages of the network. Another option could be to restrict attention to local regions instead of being a global region. But then that doesn't make the most out of the transformers. Lastly, reducing or even removing non-linearities like softmax activation can also reduce the computation. The solution chosen in CodeNet is that of downsampling, which seems to work far better than the other two approaches. To understand what I mean, let's look at the CodeNet architecture and take it from there. Now, this is the proposed architecture of CodeNet. The architecture can be broken down into four parts that are highlighted in different colors. The first is the stem stage, where we have a small network used to scale down the input to a manageable size. It can be either a single layer network with a large stride as in vision transformers, or it can be a multi-layer network that can be used for the same purpose. The next four stages are interesting. There can be 
convolution blocks or transformer blocks, of course with attention. In this particular figure, S1 and S2 are convolution blocks which are shown in yellow and S3 and S4 are transformer blocks shown in red. Now you may ask what's inside these stages that makes this network special. And before we look into the details, let's just keep in mind that what we see here is two conf and two transformer blocks. But the, it's also possible to change these numbers and experiment with different combinations like one convolution block and three transformer blocks or three convolution block and one transformer block, etc. So now let's look into each of the stages one by one. The purpose of the stem stage is to simply reduce the input to a manageable dimension so that we can do heavy computations like attention computation easily on the lower dimension. This stem stage has a sequence of conf, patch norm and activation layer like GELU as shown here. Even though it's possible to have a single downsampling layer like in Vision Transformer, we have illustrated a simple two-stage convolution block with a stride of 2x2. Two two. So if we take an input image of size 224 by 224 the stem stage should be able to half the input to a size of 112 by 112 so the stem stage is that simple let's move on to the convolutional stages s1 and s2 for the convolutional block they have chosen mb conf blocks which were introduced in the mobilenet version 2 architecture so let's see what they have done with the MobileNet version 2. First, for the nonlinearity, they have introduced the GELU nonlinearity in place of RELU 6 nonlinearity. The next change is that they simply use convolutions instead of depthwise convolutions for the downsampling stage of the network. This they say that the depthwise convolution is slower for small networks. There's no change to the pointwise convolution of the MBConf block and there's also no non-linearity for the con layer. With those changes to the MobileNet architecture, let's move on to the relative attention which happens within the transformer block, which is stages 3 and S4. Attention is the main component of transformer block. What happens in an attention block is that the input is first split into three components, namely query, key and value. The dot product of query and key is treated separately to that of the value. As we are dealing with relative attention, we introduce a learnable parameter P used to compute a relative bias which is added to the dot product of query and key. As a next step, the result is put through an activation function like softmax activation layer and finally multiplied with the value to get the output of the attention layer. Now this is the attention module. Separately, the input is passed through a feedforward network which is a Wendler neural network and the sum of the two inputs is the output of the transformer block. In addition to these changes, they do have some minor tricks like the pre-activation which we'll go through next. So pre-activation is the first trick. All that it means is that we first normalize the input with batch norm or layer norm and pass it through our module. But finally and most importantly, we add the output of the module directly to the input. So this is somewhat like a residual network and suddenly your entire block learns more from the residue rather than from the input. This trick is applied at each and every stage of the network. And then they also have uh, some downsampling, um, which seems to keep a check on the computation. The choice of downsampling is pooling, both for the transformer and the NBCon block. Now onto the experimental setting. With the same model architecture and tricks we just saw, the authors simply increase the number of blocks L and the depth D to create variations to the CodeNet architecture and name them CodeNet 0 to CodeNet 4. This table just shows different values for L and D for CodeNet architectures. 
In terms of the evaluation, they mainly use three datasets, namely ImageNet 1K, which is a dataset of size 1.3 million, and then ImageNet 21K, which is a dataset of about 12 million. And finally, they use a proprietary dataset JFT, which is about 300 million images. They train on these datasets and finally fine tune on ImageNet 1K. Obviously, to achieve good results, we need to use augmentation and regularization techniques. So for augmentation, they use rand augment and mix up, which is becoming very common recently. Again, for regularization, they use stochastic depth, label smoothing and weight decay. On to the results. The main reason for developing CodeNet architecture is to improve the generalization and model capacity simultaneously for a single network. So it's worth studying systematically the different combinations of conf and transformer blocks. In terms of generalization, the more the convolution layers, the better the generalization should be. The experimental results indeed show exactly the same. Now, as transformers have more model capacity, the more the transformer blocks, the better the capacity should be. And the experimental results indeed agree with this theory. The last thing they study is the transfer learning capability of the network. For this, they train a network on JFT dataset and transfer to the ImageNet 1K dataset. Clearly, the model with two conf and two transformer blocks is the winner here. So they have chosen this setup as a standard building block for uh, the CodeNet architecture. In our experimental setting, we mentioned they use three datasets. To report the results, they train on these three datasets and fine tune on ImageNet 1K. So these are the accuracies on ImageNet 1K. The main thing to note is that the results of CodeNet match that of the accuracies we get with convolutional architectures. The results also beat the accuracies we can achieve with image transformers. In terms of the ablation, they first study the significance of relative attention in the network. So they experiment with and without the relative attentions and the results indicate that the relative attention module does bring higher accuracies to the table. They also study the significance of the size of the attention head. So here, they increase the head size from 32 to 64 and notice that the head size of 32 performs better compared to the head size of 64. Whereas the head size m does matter, the type of normalization used, namely batch normalization or, lay no or layer normalization, doesn't seem to matter. So we can switch between the two based on whichever is faster on our hardware. So with that, we conclude CodeNet and I'm not going to say we will see you next week because I've been terrible with these videos with my full time job. So I will get back to you when I can. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye.